The sea is beautiful, and it also has incredible power. It can create life and take it away. Earth is the only planet in our solar system to have seas of water on its surface. 97% of our water is in those oceans, and 1% is in rivers, lakes, and underground aquifers. The remaining 2% is contained in the ice sheets and glaciers in the polar regions. Earlier in this series, I traveled to Iceland. There, I found clear evidence that the world's glaciers and ice sheets are melting. Well, the increased retreat of glaciers in Iceland is uh, due to global warming. That's no doubt in my mind about that. Scientists are now convinced that melting ice and warming seas will dramatically increase sea levels around the globe. Ireland will not escape. Across Ireland, floods are set to become extreme. I want to find out what these predictions mean for us and if there's anything we can do to halt the deluge. From the earliest times, we humans built our settlements near oceans and rivers. As populations grew, we built quays, dams and ports to tame the waters and protect our cities. Here in Dublin, one such project still stands proudly jutting four miles into the bay. When it was completed in 1731, the Great South Wall was the longest sea wall in the world. The Great Wall proves that we Irish have tamed the sea before. The question now, as sea levels rise, is whether we can do it again. Out here, the threat is all too clear. Many low-lying parts of Dublin will be at risk as oceans continue to rise. But Dublin is not alone. 12% of Ireland's land area is low-lying, and this is where most of us live, places close to the ocean and our rivers. And when sea level rises, then very few of us will escape its impacts. Climate change has thrown the Earth's weather patterns into chaos. The last few years have brought storms of greater power and frequency than ever seen in living memory. Leading climate scientists are predicting that the future holds far worse unless we dramatically reduce the burning of fossil fuels. Among them is Professor Michael Mann. Climate change is perhaps the greatest threat that Ireland will have to deal with in the years ahead. And there are credible estimates that we could see uh, close to two meters, as much as two meters of sea level rise by the end of the century. And uh, two meters of uh, sea level would obviously flood this area at high tide. Michael warns that if we don't cease burning fossil fuel, irreversible tipping points will cause Earth's temperature to rise by four to six degrees Celsius this century. That level of warming would fundamentally change uh, the face of the planet. It would be a planet we don't recognize. You know, millions of people displaced. It would be a planet that in some respects looks like the sort of dystopian future that has been envisioned by Hollywood in movies like Mad Max. Even if we are successful in reducing global warming, the weather in coming decades is still set to worsen. We are already locked into a certain amount of sea level rise. More rivers will break their banks. More floodplains will experience devastation. More coastal settlements will be at risk. Conscious of these challenges, the OPW has established CFRAM, 
a massive undertaking that looks at flood risk and management. Having studied 300 high-risk areas, 50,000 detail maps have been drawn up, looking at different flood scenarios, ranging from between a half and one metre sea level rise. And then this is Dublin. So for each of these cases, we look at the existing ground conditions and then we model it and produce the extents of what we can predict if nothing was done in these towns. You see lots of blue here. Mm. This is flooding caused by the rivers. Now, where is this exactly in Dublin? This is down in Ballsbridge. Ballsbridge. This map shows the river flooding. This like is just this river showing, flooding. Yeah, yeah. But it's all literally gone underwater. I mean, you have a couple of little islands. Mm. So we're looking at 300 communities around the country, areas for further assessment, as we call them, or the hotspots. So what we're doing is estimating what the flood flows will be coming down the river, estimating where, how high the coast level will be, and then we're producing maps like this for these 300 locations. Here in Galway, this is flooding caused by wave action in the harbour during a storm event. And it's Shop Street. Where's Shop Street? This is Shop Street. Shop here. Street. It is Shop Street. Oh, yeah. To a certain point, it's flooded. Right. So literally, all that part of Galway and all up here, further up. And then Salt Hill is another story. So, Duncan, on this map, we can see the coastal flooding that can affect Salt Hill. Um, so you can see all around this area, the flooding comes quite far inland, and it comes right up in here. All this area gone here too. Okay. Now, when you get on to looking at solutions, yes. what do you look at? We look at options that may or may not work. We'll do a detailed analysis of them in terms of their impacts on people, the economy, the environment, infrastructure. And we take that appraisal then to public consultation and present to people, we're looking at these options, these are the ones we think might work, but then let the people have their say. Rosemary shows me a map of Clonakilty in County Cork. Clonakilty. And this is the main street of Clonakilty here, all underwater, and all this area of the town. That's right, that's what we expect could happen with a 20% increase in, in rainfall intensity. My God, that's incredible. If you take then the big picture of climate change and the impacts both of sea and fluvial mm -hmm. floods that are coming down with climate change, yes. can you protect everything? Um, no. 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 Well, obviously, significant communities will be able to protect those up to a certain level. And so the likes of Dublin, Cork, Galway, obviously to move the entire centre of Dublin would be a, a huge undertaking. So we'll be able to provide that with a level of protection, even with a certain amount of sea level rise. Um, so we don't have a formal policy of letting places go, um, letting urban areas go to the sea at the moment. But there may well be some tipping point in the future when we simply won't be able to provide any further protection. To find out what flooding means for a community, I travel south to Clonakilty. Sitting in a beautiful estuary, the 400-year-old town is home to bountiful flocks of seabirds and nearly 5,000 people. In the past decade, it's been hit time and again by floods. The Imperial Hotel is among the many premises that have been inundated. So how many times have you been flooded here? Like, we gave up counting after 10, so like it's 10, so we're between 10 and 20. And um, how high will it come? Well, we can take this as an example. You would be looking at this sort of level here. It must be heartbreaking every time it happens. It drains the life out of you. You stand here, it, it's, it's murder. People say that that's been melodramatic, which it's a house invasion by sewage, by salt water, and then you have to start afresh. And people live in fear, particularly elderly people. So how bad is it going to be out on the street here? Up and down, how far will it extend? The tidal flooding will charge up the street here, and we will have a level Maybe, maybe about here. This sort of level here, yeah. all the way along here. Right, and if yeah. we're getting the climate change that we're talking about, and the storm surges, you're saying a meter. So if we're at this, plus another meter. Absolutely, I mean, right, this the, is... the, that's the end of Clan Clan cannot live with that kind of volume of water. And like th this is this is a, a video of uh, the, the the flooding in 2012 and you will see the Armageddon 
in the town and how how can we how can we live with it? We, do we abandon the town? Clonakilty faces a double problem. When rain falls heavily, the river Farla breaks its banks, bringing destruction to the heart of town. During heavy storms, the ocean pushes in from the estuary and floods the town from the coast. Clonakilty urgently needs defences, but there is disagreement about what shape these defences should take. Colette Toomey joins me with Humphrey down at the seafront. The OPW solution is a stone wall all along here. Along here? Along here. And people travelling from Cork, the first view of the sea is on the N71 is, is here, and that will be gone. One of the solutions that's been, well, that we are putting forward is to put a barrage here across. Here, out here, out. Yes, and control the tide coming in and out. Colette and Humphrey believe that their option of a barrage would be a better solution than the seawall that the OPW are proposing. The 100-year plan is this, because we will have to deal with the tide. The tide is rising. Nature is going to batter us more and more unless we put this kind of a, a tidal defence in place. And, you know, people that have been flooded welcome any solution. But as we have the opportunity, um, I think we should um, enhance the town as well as solve the problem. I head to Donovan's Hotel, where the OPW consultation team is at work informing the public about the proposal. Conor Galvin leads the team. Conor, there's an awful lot of excitement there in the room today with local people. Yeah, we're at a public exhibition stage and we've already been here twice already carrying out public consultations and getting people's opinions on the appropriate solution. And what we're presenting today is what we think is the appropriate solution for Clonakilty. And we're giving people the opportunity to provide additional feedback on, on what we're planning to do. When you have a high tide and you have a high river and it's gone into the embankment across the way from us, where is that excess water going to go? Correct. So that's where we're talking. Can't the barrage needs that's to be on the agenda. Right. Now, we met different people with different issues and we're finding some people agree with what you're doing, others have other options. Yeah, Clonakil is a very engaged community and they've come to us with a lot of feedback on our proposed solutions and it's made us think about all the different criteria that we assess our options against, be it environment, social, cost benefit. I mean, we came up with a whole suite of options to address the flood risk. One of them involved constructing a barrage, which there was a lot of support from locally. There's also people locally who didn't see that as the, the best option because it's a special area of conservation, a special protected area, and we were very unlikely to be able to build a barrage in that location. I would have thought that a decision like this would be easy, protect the town at any cost. But this room is full of differing opinions. Have you been looking at these? I have, yeah, yeah. I have indeed, yeah. And uh, this, is, this is where I live myself, oh, in this, you live? at this corner. And this is where the wall is going to go. That's right, here. And, and along yeah. here as well. And at this point, it's going to be 1.7 metres. So I think the place is going to be covered in walls, really high walls, which aesthetically is going to be a difficulty for a lot of people. But I think overall, I'm pleased with it. Yeah, pleased Why? with it, really. Well, I mean, I'm pleased with it because I think um, 30 years have been kind of wasted on the notion of a barrage halfway down the bay. So you'd so, like to see this done as soon as possible, would you? Well, I think so. I mean, I mean, I think so. I mean, I certainly wouldn't like to see the people being flooded again, you know? And I think the sooner this is done, the better. I think at this stage... Listening to the community, it becomes clear that the decisions Ireland will have to make around flood protection are going to be complex. There will be many competing interests. Politics, heritage, environment, industry, tourism. So many interests will argue for their needs to be met. Ultimately, however, much of the discussion will come down to money. Well, take for example, Clonakilty, the options that we're proposing will has a cost estimate of over 12 million, but that gets paid back over time. So for every euro we spend in Clonakilty, there's 1.7 euros saved in potential damages. So ultimately, the money we spend protecting towns from flooding is paid back to us in the damages that we prevent. I travel inland to Clonmel, County Tipperary. 
I was born in this beautiful town, and although it's had a long history of flooding, I can personally attest that the floods of my youth were nothing compared to the floods we have seen in recent years. Just imagine what this would be like if predictions of a further rise in rainfall of 20% are accurate. But Clonmel needn't worry for the time being, because it is one of the first locations on the CFRAM high-risk list to have had a protection system put in place. Steel reinforced walls have been built along most of the bank. To ensure these walls don't ruin the town's traditional character, the designers came up with a novel approach for some sections. When a flood is predicted by our computer systems, it sends a text alarm to the town engineer, who then mobilizes his crew and puts this in place. We have a flood warning system ourselves, which is based on river gauges and rainfall gauges throughout the river shore catchment. But we say, I get a text then to say to my phone, and that would warn me then of impending levels being breached. And we have 26 locations in Clamel where the mountains have to be erected, depending on the, on the extent of flooding that's predicted. There's over half a kilometre of the mountains to be erected along the top of the key wall. That typically involves 20 men for up to six hours coming in together and erecting the mountains and having them up before we say the levels reach that, that, that defined level. One of the key challenges in Clonmel is that the flood levels that would come through at a large flood event would be deep enough that we would require two and a half metre walls and places to hold them back. So we kept walls to a reasonable height and then when required, we can put this demountable element on top, but only when required, that it may join this wall with the concrete wall behind you there that runs downstream. I actually have a business on the quay and approximately every other year the water would reach a level where it would come up to my waist belt and that would mean that I would have to cease practicing for two or three days and it had significant uh, financial effects from the point of view that one couldn't get insurance. This wall has made an enormous difference to me. It means that I can enjoy the river as a facility and no longer at the back of my mind is the fear that it's going to come and flood. Right. So it has made an enormous difference. The cost of this must be massive. I mean, that's a huge amount of engineering work going on here. How much does this all of this cost? We don't see it as spending, but rather investing money because there's economic analysis carried out that's part of the decision-making process so that the benefits that the community get from the scheme outweigh the cost and justifies the investment. Right, so this approach is economically viable for this town. Correct. Otherwise, these houses would all be destroyed. Yes. Each one of the 300 CFRAM high-risk locations will require its own unique solution. Inevitably, however, as climate worsens, there will be some places for which solutions cannot be found. Dr Eugene Farrell, an expert in coastal erosion, understands the challenge better than most. His research is showing that parts of Ireland's coast are being cannibalised by the sea. He's convinced climate change will make matters worse. One of the big questions we have in Ireland is how this coastline is going to respond over the short term, but also the long term. We know sea level is going to rise and we know storm frequency in terms of day will also increase. And the 100 year storm will become the five year storm. And as sea level rises, we know that coastal systems, ecosystems, they want to move inland. It's called coastal squeeze. Habitats get squeezed, ecosystems get squeezed. And does that mean a lot of land area will be abandoned to the sea? Is that a reality we've got to face up to? That's a reality we have to face up to, absolutely. And 
The problem we're facing here in a lot of coastal environments in Ireland is there's coastal communities, there's coastal infrastructure, there's residence houses, there's industry, there's agriculture practices going on. And over time, they get eliminated, they get drowned. And so what we're seeing coming out now is a great debate, which is essentially two extremes. Do we resist the changes or do we adapt to the changes? And the question now becomes, how are we going to respond as a, as a nation? Because the longer we go on, some of the changes will be irreversible and it'll be too late. Near Castle Gregory, the Maharese, a narrow peninsula jutting out into the Atlantic, is already under threat. Recent storms have carved large chunks off the dunes. Storm barriers built a couple of decades ago have already failed. The dunes have retreated as much as 30 metres in some parts. Clearly, protective measures can only go so far. What future has this whole peninsula got? Well, it's a very bleak future if it goes on, if the status quo continues. Uh, most definitely, I think they need to put in some sort of uh, coastal plan regarding dune management. Are these not still, though, short-term measures? They're short-term, I mean... I mean, the reality is, are they not going to be overwhelmed by what's going to come down here? And is this not a problem in many, many parts of the country? Absolutely. It is. We can't stop this. We know that. The question is, how will we adapt? And are we willing to make, essentially, a cultural shift? Already, 50,000 homes in flood risk zones cannot get insurance. As sea levels rise, this figure will escalate. Meanwhile, during the last decade, bad planning led to thousands of homes being built on floodplains, often with disastrous consequences. It's a mistake that councils across Ireland must never make again. There are fears that the cost of protecting us from what's coming could cripple the Irish economy. However, there may be a way that we can turn these challenges into economic opportunities for Ireland. Among them is Professor Michael Mann. We know that climate change related damages are already costing a trillion dollars a year. And the cost of mitigating climate change is quite a bit less than that. So the good news is that um, we can actually grow the economy and solve this problem at the same time. If we invest money in technical innovation, that'll help us solve this problem. And of course, Ireland is a great example, is one of the, the fastest growing economies um, in, in the world. But Ireland also has among the highest per capita fossil fuel emissions of any country. And so it plays a very important role here. Ireland can convince the rest of the world that it's possible to grow your economy and do something about this problem as well by taking a leadership role. One of your former presidents, Mary Robinson, has taken a leadership role in raising public awareness about the threat of climate change. And people listen when Ireland speaks out. And I think Ireland can play a very important role in raising awareness of the threat that we're dealing with here. What kind of Ireland do we want to see in 50 years' time? Do we want to be fighting a losing battle against raging storms? Or do we want an Ireland that is successful with the track record for leading the struggle in one of the most important battles the world has ever faced? The concern is, rather than enabling us switch to a greener economy, our political representatives are seeking derogations on mandatory emission targets. This short-term thinking will seriously impact our children's future. This will take huge investments in new technologies and a fundamental change in the way we live. I've got to say that I'm deeply concerned about all of this. But if we are true and wise about it and get it right, it could prove to be our greatest opportunity.